Hey there, on tonight's episode, we preview the dunk on obesity event, hit the field for the Rebels spring football game, and sprint our way to the finish line with reporter Carl Winder. All that and more happening right now. It's game on. Welcome to Game On, I'm Austin Inney. And I'm Katie McLean. Getting active is always an important part of life, and reporter Jordan Harrison recently attended the Dunk on Obesity event. It encourages kids to get fit and stress the importance of exercising. Have a look. With technology taking over, kids are less motivated to be more active. UNOV Hospitality students want to make a difference by hosting a Dunk on Obesity basketball clinical to encourage kids to be more fit. Obesity is rising, like they show, there's statistics that show that it is, and I think more kids need to be active. And nowadays, you don't really see a lot of kids outside. They're more inside playing video games. Exercising can be difficult and usually isn't all that fun. So for a lot of young children and teenagers, it is hard to find motivation. I try to promote a healthy lifestyle, but I try to have them enjoy what they're doing. Because if the kids enjoy what they're doing, then they don't even feel like they're exercising. With obesity rising in the younger generations, it is important for parents to ensure that their kids are doing some form of physical activity on a regular basis. My son plays basketball because it's something that's fun for him to do, and it gives him a lot of exercise, gets him off the couch. Basketball and all other sports provide a great way to encourage children to not only stay active, but also helps them realize the importance of exercising. I think it's important to stay fit. By playing a lot of sports, you get healthy, you get more active. It helps you stay healthy because you get running and dribbling, shooting a lot. Even though the students put on a basketball event, they wanted to make sure that the kids knew it's not the only way to dunk on obesity. Going outside playing soccer, um, even something simple as playing tag, you know, just as long as you're getting outside and staying physically active, you don't have to have an organized sport for that. The obesity epidemic in children continues to grow. According to the American Heart Association, 23.9 million children ages 2 to 19 are overweight or obese. It is vital to stress the importance of staying fit to children. For Game On, I'm Jordan Harrison. Thank you, Jordan. A very good cause and a chance to play some basketball as well. Now let's send it over to Austin, who is sitting down with UFC cutman Stitch Duran. Guys? That's right. Thank you, Katie. Joined by UFC Cutman and Boxing Cutman as right. well, Stitch Duran. Stitch, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure, Austin. Thanks for having me of here. Of course. Man. Now, let's yeah. talk a little bit about, for people who don't know at home, what Cutmen actually do. Actually, we save a lot of fights. <laughs> we protect a lot of fighters and we change a lot of careers. But, you know, our, our initial job is, once we get into the dressing rooms, is the UFC, through Dana White, mm -hmm. offered our services to these fighters, uh, bringing in professional cutmen. Right. So the first thing we do is we wrap the fighters' hands and uh, protect them, hopefully, so that uh, there's no injuries. Right. Uh, but come fight time, I'm, I'm usually in the red corner. There's another cutman in the blue corner, and our job is a fighter gets starts swallowing up or he starts getting cut, right. is to control the bleeding or the swallowing and give that fighter every opportunity to win a fight. Obviously, give, give him yeah. that one more round. Obviously, there's a lot that goes in physically to it. How do you handle it on the mental side, seeing these guys banged up, cut all the time? How do you handle it with your mentality? Oh, that's a real good question, man. And, you know, these guys, they're like my children. Right. You know, even though these guys are modern-day gladiators, uh, it's, it, it is a mental, strong mental thing. And uh, what I always do is I always prepare for the worst-case scenario. And, and I've seen worst-case scenarios. And, uh, but, you know, when, when a fighter gets a victory and you have something to do with it, uh, there's 100% pleasure there. Let's keep in mind, on, on TV here, but talk about some injuries that you have seen and some of the more, uh, I guess, gruesome ones that you have seen. I've seen some pretty bad ones, and you know, people always ask me what's the worst cut I've ever worked. And right. you know, a while back, uh, Marvin Eastman here at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, uh, he took a knee from Vitor Belfort and literally just gassed him. Uh, it, as one fan said, it looked like uh, filleted shrimp. And oh, uh, so I had to work on him. And you know, there was another sad point when uh, Corey Hill broke his leg throwing a kick and, and uh, having Dale Hart check it and literally just broke his, his leg. And, and I had to attend to that. Uh, but uh, you know, through all the injuries, there's always a lot of good victories. Right. Now let's talk a little bit about your boxing portion yeah. of the side. Who you team up with in the boxing side of fighting? Well, you know, right now I have uh, the two Klitschko brothers, which are both the heavyweight champs of the world. And uh, I work with Andre Ward, which is uh, the last American to win a gold medal. Uh, right now he uh, won the Super Six uh, 
championship tournament, and uh, he's the super middleweight champ of the world. Uh, so these are the three guys that I'm, I'm locked into. Uh, I always, as a freelancer, I work with so many other different fighters. Right. Las Vegas, obviously a huge community for UFC, for boxing. Right. What do you see in the near future? Do you see it continuing to rise here in the Valley? Well, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I moved to Las Vegas 17 years ago from the Bay Area. Uh, then it was only boxing, and all the big mega fights were here in Las Vegas. And when Dana White brought me on board to work with him in UFC 32 is when I started, yeah. uh, a lot of the fights for the UFC were here. But now we travel all over the world. Uh, main difference to see boxing and UFC, uh, do, you, do you see more violent cuts in one compared to the other, or are they about the same working with boxers and UFC fighters? Yeah, well, you know, usually when I work with boxing, I, I work with one specific fighter. With the UFC, I work with all of them. Uh, but the cuts seem to be a little bit more multiple in, okay. in the UFC. You know, uh, in boxing, one cut is common. Two cuts is usually not too common. Uh, they're pretty common in the UFC, two and three cuts. Gotcha. Well, Stitch, thank you so much for joining us today. It was always a pleasure to talk to you, and best of luck traveling the globe and, and working UFC and boxing events. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Well, as the spring semester begins, its final descent, the fall semester is just down the road, which means another season of UNLV football. Reporter Stephen Marsh caught a glimpse of how the team is looking in their annual spring game. Take a look. A bowl game. It's something this team and UNLV hasn't seen in over a decade something this team hope changes this year. The Rebel football team concluded its spring practice with the Scarlet and Gray Showcase at Rebel Park, and the team seemed to be closer than ever. I think just, you know, the way our offense is our chemistry together, I think that, you know, we're putting it a little bit different uh, as far as offense is concerned, and uh, the speed of our offense, I think, is greatly increased. Despite the last three years of subpar results, Coach Houck and the team has set a goal of winning six games, making them bowl eligible, something this school hasn't experienced since 2000 something Coach Houck feels is an achievable goal. We need to finish games. Uh, we need to be more highly competitive on the road. Uh, and I think with the veteran play and more experience and improvement as a football team, I think we can do that. Sherry, who completed 7 of 10 attempts for 59 yards during April 12th showcase, along with 11 returning starters, gives the team the experience it's been waiting for. Just the maturity. I mean, all the guys are taking you know, their own workload and they're running with it. Coach Houck knows Sherry has a lot of potential, and now that he has a year under his belt, he expects big things from the likely starting QB. I think he'll improve a bunch this summer and uh, through his sophomore year, and you know, I, I expect over a four-year span that he would get better and better, uh, maybe almost with every game he plays. Be calm. To be calm in the pocket and to be calm when he's playing, and I think that you know, that's going to help me a lot. And while the Scarlet team won the scrimmage 13-0, Come this fall, the hope is they aren't just beating themselves. Our offense, it's going to be fun to watch and it's going to be fun to play. For Game On, I'm Stephen Marsh. Thank you, Stephen. Time now for our first break, but when we come back, more football coming at you as I sit down with the Las Vegas Showgirls head football coach, Dion Lee. Stay tuned. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months. And now, we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. What you doing, Dad? My favorite thing. Really, Dad? What are you doing? Paying bills. Every month, a stack of them come, just as regular as the rain. What's this one? That's a special one, son. I pay it first. How come? It's money for my retirement account. I put some money aside each month, just like I was paying a bill. Wouldn't you rather buy something? I don't want to work forever, and I don't want you to have to support me in my old age. In a way, I'm buying peace of mind. I'm on the installment plan. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key.
Hey guys, welcome back from the break. Joined in the studio today by Las Vegas Showgirls head football coach Dion Lee. Dion, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, no problem, no problem at all. Game That's, on. Game on. It's, we're, we're all the way in the spirit here. Yes. Let's talk about football in general, the differences mm -hmm. between coaching females and coaching males. Uh, the difference is that you really have to be a great fundamental coach. It's like starting all over again as a coach teaching Pot Warner football, right. uh, but the acceleration rate of the ladies are a lot faster due to the fact that they're older and mature and they can understand a lot faster than an eight to ten year old. Obviously a unique situation coaching ladies. How did you get involved? I got involved about in 2005. I had a friend of mine who owned a team in LA called the LA Amazons. He wanted me to invest in his team. Uh, I was moving out here to Vegas and I told him no, I'm going to start my own team. Obviously, we talked a little bit about beforehand. Mm -hmm. What's your background in football? How did you get going in football itself? Uh, believe it or not, I am an ex-football player, Cal State Long Beach, go 49ers, <laughs> uh, you know, which was a rival of UNLV at one point in time. Uh, back in 90, well, 88 through 91, I was coached by George Allen, a Hall of Famer. And uh, I've just been involved in football ever since. I'm a son of a coach, uh, been in the film room since the age of four. Now the showgirls, let's get back on track with them. Okay. Off season's over. You guys are prepping for some games now. Yes, uh, we actually started up our league. We're in the Women's Football Alliance. Uh, there's 65 teams nationwide. Uh, we play an eight-game regular season schedule. Uh, we just had our first away game, league game, last week. Uh, we actually lost, uh, but we are on track to be on the playoffs. Uh, we have a game this coming 13th and the 20th home games Perfect. over at Western High School. Western High School is the venue where you guys play. Yes. At. Now. The 65 different teams around the nation, you guys only play eight games. Where do you travel? Uh, we travel as far north at northwest as Seattle. Uh, we go far north as uh, Salt Lake City. Okay. And down to Phoenix, Arizona, and then, of course, San Diego. So you guys have a lot of different traveling destinations. Yes, the yes. Do they change every year? It changes every year, depending on new teams, old teams, who comes in in the league, and how can we regionalize everything. And then how does it work with the playoffs? Obviously, having 65 teams, there's a ton of different teams that can vie for a playoff spot. How does that whole system work? Well, there's 14 different divisions or areas. Okay. Uh, you have to win your, your division in order to make the playoffs, and then there's wild cards. Uh, so in our, this opportunity, we'll, we'll play against Utah. Oh, very uh, nice. The winner of our league will wind up playing a Southern California team. Okay. So it's, it's regionally based. Right. So then you guys, obviously, having your home games coming up. After that, you hit the road again for a couple stretches of road games, or do you guys have back-to-backs, usually road, road, home, home? Uh, we do. It, it, it fluctuates. But okay. right now we have two, two home games, and then we hit the road two more times. Then we have another home game on May 11th and then June 1st. So it kind of stretches out with a couple of buys in between as well. It's over a 10-week period having eight games. So we have two buys in between. Let's get into strategy now. What type of strategy do you insert into the game plan each and every week going in? <laughs> it all depends on who makes the practice. <laughs> uh, you know, our, our basic philosophy is we're a uh, run-and-shoot type of offense, uh, spread option. Uh, we do have some power running backs. Shamika Finks is one of the best running backs in, in the league. Uh, we have Kerry Walters, who's probably one of the, the best receivers in women's football of all times. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the right quarterback in, in, in the spot to make it happen. And if a quarterback can't, is not able to throw, then we have to use our running game. Right. Uh, I, I like to be multiple dimensioned. Now, how do the ladies get involved with you guys? How do they come into the Showgirls organization? Well, believe it or not, a lot of them are ex-collegiate athletes track tennis, volleyball, basketball players who want to compete when they come home from whatever university they are or right. went to here at UNLV, uh, and they still had a competitive edge and want to compete. And now to be able to play a sport that they've always grown up watching, now they get to play it, and they just fall in love with it. You know, we, we work a 365-day-a-year program where we're, we're running, lifting weights, doing football drills. Final question for you, Deanne. What's your favorite part about being part of the Showgirls organization and mm -hmm. coaching the fine women on the team? Getting the aha button, you know, when the girl finally got it. You know, we worked all, all season long to get it, and then she got that aha. That's when I know I'm doing my job as a coach. Perfect. Dion, thank you so much for coming in the studio all and joining right. us today. And best of luck to you thank on you. your two home games coming up. That's it for this segment, but stay tuned. More Game On right after the break. You could choose to join a gang. You could try the latest drugs. You could even choose to drop out of school. You can try to avoid the difficulties in life with a quick fix, or you can face them head on. She did. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force.
think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back from the break. Well, earlier in the show, we covered an event helping promote a good cause, and we have another one in store as well. Reporter Justin Fuller participated in the annual Aid for AIDS of Nevada Walk. Take a look. The 23rd annual AIDS Walk was held at the UNLV campus where thousands were in attendance to help support the cause. This is the biggest AFAN walk so far, so congratulate yourself. Thank you all so much for coming on down. We're proud to announce that we have over 12,000 walkers this year. The walk brought out locals, including some who are deeply affected by the disease. My brother died of AIDS in 2003, and that year I walked the AIDS Walk by myself, and I vowed always to keep this issue close to my heart, and I did. In 2004, we formed Team Winos, and we've been around now. This is our 10th year walking in the AIDS Walk. Friends, family, and pet owners also decided to join the event to help support the cause. <laughs> Celebrities from around the valley and different companies also came out to help AFA and gather donations. We do fundraising work in this manner. So today we're painting and donating AIDS ribbon ornaments to the AFAN office. All the proceeds are going to them. There is a picnic after the walk where there is food and entertainment. Of course, the walk itself wasn't too bad for some participants. It was great. It went real well. I was glad to be here to support AFAN. Walk was a little warm. I'm sweating. So it, uh, but no, the walk's been great. It was, uh, had a good time out there. And, and uh, I think most of the Walgreen people went. A lot of fun. It was amazing. It was great. The campus is beautiful. We're very happy to be here. We're hoping that the event just grows and continues to grow as it has, uh, raise more money so that we can continue providing the services that we do. For Game On, this is Justin Fuller. Thank you for that, Justin. Obviously a great walk for a great cause. Now let's send it over to Katie, who is sitting down with former UNLV basketball manager Sean McCollum. Thanks, Austin. I'm right here joined by Sean McCollum, a student team manager for the UNLV basketball team. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So how many years have you been doing the student team managing? This was my first and uh, only, or last year, since I will be graduating in May, but um, I've done it for one year, and it was a great, rewarding experience. It was, it was actually, I got a lot more out of it than I anticipated. So. so how did you end up like falling into this student managing position? Believe it or not, I was actually at home on Facebook on my computer when I got a uh, um, thread through the UNLV athletics page saying they were looking for team managers to go ahead and apply. So I kind of clicked on that. I looked into it a little bit more and uh, read a bit more information and actually applied through uh, email, sent a couple resumes out, had a couple callbacks, and that's actually how I initially heard about it was actually on Facebook, believe it or not. So yeah. Oh, so that's fun. So tell me about some of your experiences that you've had. Well, the, uh, primarily I worked in the, the film department. Uh, I've, I would always have to help out, you know, rebounding, um, helping players out, um, get, getting them some shots up in the gym whenever they need it. But my primary duty consisted of uh, being in the basement, actually filming every single practice and making edits and whatnot, uh, kind of, you know, uh, cutting up the stuff between uh, you know guards and and coaches and films or whatnot, but uh, it was really great. So I I mostly work with the film, but every now and then when they would need me, you know, I would stay after, help players get some shots up, like I said, and then help rebound and uh, just very overall great experience. So you're a journalism major yes. as well. So this really actually helped you with mm -hmm. learning in your career as not like necessarily your major. Yes, not necessarily learning, but uh, the number one reason why I did is because my ultimate passion or goal, if you would, is to go into sports journalism. This kind of gave me a little, a uh, little different side of the spectrum. Um, you know, stepping away from the journalistic uh, perspective, I got to actually see first up, up close and personal. You know how coaching works, how fundamentals work. Actually being a part of the team, and that's the number one reason why I did that, just to get to get another side of the spectrum. And it was really cool just to you know kind of branch out and see what differences you know, being a journalist versus an actual hands-on, you know, assistant team manager is and how they differ. 
So that's the main main difference. Okay, so how many people did you work with mm -hmm. on the like how many other student managers were there? As far as there was us and believe it, I believe eight other people. So there was a lot of us. So everyone had a role, and everyone's role was very important. And uh, we all kind of collaborated, got together, and uh, you know kind of worked as a team and just just got through it all. Okay, so what would you give to people who, um, what advice would you give to people who would want to get into student team managing? My advice to uh, everyone out there would be just to, uh, if, if you really want to do this, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, make sure you're prepared, but with it comes a lot of reward. Just make sure your passion, your heart's in it, and you'll get a lot out of it. Okay, thank you so much, Sean, thank for, for being me. here with us thank today. You. Time now for a quick break, but when we come back, more Game On. Stay tuned. <laughs> is the color that your skin was meant to be, no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29 and one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. Welcome back from the break. Well, let's shift into high gear here. Track star Emily Block is UNLV's top sprinter, and Carl Winder has the story. Carl? Multiple titles and one of the fastest college ladies in the West, Emily Block has dominated the Mountain West sprinting scene, and it all started when her parents encouraged her to take up track. You know, saw that I had some potential, so I just kept going from there. From that moment on, she went on to find success in her small town of Conifer, Colorado, winning multiple state titles for sprinting and being named a Gatorade All-American for track in Colorado. She had the opportunity to go to some of Colorado's most prestigious universities, but chose UNLV for a non-track reason. Uh, one of the main reasons I picked UNLV is, is because I want to go to physical therapy school. But don't let that reason fool you. People that are close to Block say she is the biggest competitor you will ever meet. She's very intense. She's, I think she's actually ranked like top 20 in the nation in the 100. And uh, she's first in conference in the 100 and 200. So she's definitely one of the top dogs. On the track, definitely, you know, her, her sprinting has, she's become very strong, um, strong athlete, very competitive. Um, she, she's fearless. She'll go into any competition with the goal to win. Block has been one of the best sprinters in the nation. And as for after college, the Olympics are a goal for her, but she said she has a little bit of work to do before that. Is the Olympics one of my goals right now? No. Um, but am I working at goals that are getting me closer and closer to, you know, maybe that being an opportunity? Absolutely. For Game On, I'm Carl Winder. Thank you, Carl. Now let's send it over to Austin, who is sitting down with former UNLV intramural official David Olison. Guys? That's right, Katie. You said it. Thank you. Joined by David Olison, the former UNLV intramural referee. Dave, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you doing, Austin? Great. Thank you very much. Let's talk about UNLV intramurals, how you got started in officiating with the intramural, I guess, community at UNLV. Well, I was looking for a job, and one of my friends, he was already an official with UNLV, and he had been for about a year. And he said that it was really, you know, paid pretty well compared to some of the other jobs on campus. Right. He said, you know, you're going to have to work hard, but 
uh, it's worth it in the end. So I signed up. First sport I did was indoor soccer, and um, I remember that. That was pretty crazy. Things have changed a lot since then. Um, and then from there, I kind of just moved up the ladder and did it for two years. Uh, had a lot of great experiences in that time, and I definitely don't regret it. It was worth every second. I mean, went through a lot as an official. You tend to go through you know, people yelling at you right, all and all sorts of stuff, but uh, it, it was totally worth it and uh, probably one of the best experiences of my life. Let's talk about the trips you got to go on because of being a referee for intramurals. Yeah, I ended up um, the first year we did flag football, and a lot of things that um, people really don't know about intramurals from the outside is that you get to travel, especially if you're the fall campus champion for flag football or the spring campus champion in basketball. Um, you get a paid trip to wherever regionals are being held that year. And so my first year it was at Tempe, Arizona in Phoenix. So I basically got a free trip home. My mom lives 10 minutes from campus. Um, but the highlight was the next year I got to go again and ref at UCLA for regionals. And we were refereeing right next to Pauley Pavilion where the Bruins play and all the history that's going on there. And so um, all expenses paid and then we get paid while we're there too. So you end up about $100, $120, depending on how well you do in the plus. That's awesome. Well, Dave, time flies. We're talking to you the meals, but thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Austin. Time now for a quick break. When we get back, our final thoughts and we look ahead to next week's show. Stay with us. For others, it may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescuman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Winston, just one more inning, Grandma. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back from the break. Well, Katie, we've covered a lot of cool events today. The Aid for AIDS of Nevada Walk, the Dunk on Obesity event. What have you liked most? I feel like the Dunk on Obesity event was really important because I feel like it's important to uh, show our youth to have like a good fitness background, a good healthy lifestyle so that in the long run you won't be affected by any problems later on. Right, set the tone for life. Well, that does it for this week's show. If you'd like to catch up on past episodes of Game On, all you have to do is go to unlvtv.unlv.edu. I'm Austin Inning. And I'm Katie McLean. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, have a good one, Las Vegas.